because you have to be very confident about um, realizing your dreams and taking them to the next level and realizing that they might change. Not being easily offended if someone critiques them or offers you advice about how to do it better. Um, have selective listening as well and um, from people's perspectives. Know when to ask the right questions and how. All of those pieces are very important to the puzzle. I am Jasmine Jones, the CEO and founder of Cherry Blossom Intimates, and I am from Washington, D.C. We help breast cancer survivors to be fit for bras and prosthetics in a brand new way. I decided to create this company because I realized that breast cancer survivors had a really terrible shopping experience. I watched my grandmother go through it. Uh, she would shop for bras and post mastectomy prosthetics in medical supply stores behind aisles of bedpans and walkers, Bengay, laxatives, adult diapers, and that's where she was expected to shop for all of her life. And I remember thinking that someone should do something about that. And it was kind of bizarre to me that my sisters and I were able to shop in really beautiful boutiques, but breast cancer survivors who are still women who've survived so much are then just forced to shop in medical supply stores. So I met a really great breast surgeon and she and I decided to come together and build something that her patients would love and that a woman like my grandmother would have loved. Unfortunately, I lost my grandmother, but I knew that there had to be a better way and I wanted to provide that. So I put together my entrepreneurial spirit and a doctor's um, uh, medical know-how and we built something that was that's really special. We've helped over 3,000 women and we've been open for a little over a year, which I think is so important. But I've always been optimistic about my future and I think it's a culmination of so many of my life experiences that it made me the entrepreneur that I am today. So it doesn't have to start glamorously. It doesn't have to start with a whole lot of money and um, knowing the exact plan, but you do have to start. So that would be a piece of advice I'd give to everyone who wants to become an entrepreneur. Get started now um, and learn along the way. It does not have to be perfect as long as you're learning. So we all be 3D breast prosthetics for breast, for breast cancer survivors. So after a woman loses her breast, her breasts are considered durable medical equipment, but most of these women shop in medical supply stores. So we offer them the opportunity to shop in a boutique space in a boutique setting where they can shop alongside their best friends. So we have bras in over 200 sizes for women who have not experienced breast cancer. Our most popular bra is a 40 band in a G cup. But we do help breast cancer survivors in the fitting room off to the side in the exact same space so that they can shop with dignity and feel beautiful again. I always like to say that we're a place where a breast cancer survivor can find a post-surgical bra, breast forms, and a sexy pair of panties. And that is really hard to find in this world. So that's what we do. Um, we've helped over 3,000 women. We have almost 1,000 patients on our roster. And we handle all medical billing for our patients. So the medical insurance reimbursement process is really challenging, but all of these items are covered by insurance. Most women just don't know, or the challenge is too great of a pain point for them to even file the claim. So we actually handle the medical billing for the patients. My biggest achievement was overcoming the insurance accreditation process. So that was a very long process and it took our business a lot of time and patience and effort and money to make sure that we could accept insurance for our patients. But we knew it was so important that it was something we definitely had to do. I'm really proud of that. Our boutique looks like a Madison Avenue store. And I think that women who've experienced breast cancer deserve that level of treatment and care. So I'm very proud of that. So I so it's a two pronged answer, but one is being able to take that pain away from customers to be able to help them with their insurance. And secondly, it would be to actually open a space that I take pride in owning. The most challenging part of being a business owner is that everything costs a billion dollars. Everything is very expensive and nobody warns you that it's going to be so expensive. So when I see people putting together budgets for their company, I always tell them to then double that number because it's going to be so many things you didn't expect. Well, I personally sacrifice. So um, 
there were no frills. It was a lot of eating ramen or spending my last dollar to make sure that the business had it because I believed in the mission and the vision and I wasn't going to quit just because it was hard. An entrepreneur creates opportunity in the world. So they create opportunity, whether that is through their team being able to create lives and jobs and and success and comfort for the homes of their team. They create opportunity in their customers to feel fulfilled, um, but they unlock doors. And I think as an entrepreneur, that is something that you don't get as a as an employee of someone else. You don't have the opportunity to, to change or pivot. I think also entrepreneurship provides a little bit of freedom in that you can make decisions for, that are best for yourself and for the company. What bothers me as an entrepreneur is when people try to make it seem easy uh, and they try to sell their dreams to other people as if it's something where you just throw your hair in a bun and grab some coffee and handle it. And I see those kind of Instagram posts a lot for my generation, for millennials who think that it's, it's an easy route to take uh, to achieve the things that they wanna achieve. And I wish that people wouldn't sell it that way. Airtable. Airtable is a really great website and app that can help you to get organized all in one place. So I would say Airtable. I'm also a big fan of list. So I make a list of what I want to do, what I want to accomplish, and then I check that off. I also like to create a vision of where I'm going to go. And I like to think about that vision and meditate on it um, often so that it can come true. So visualization, Airtable, and list. Take your time in realizing that everything costs a lot of money and see if you can get everything priced out lower. Don't just accept the best company's proposal and their price as solid. Like definitely do your research to see if you can find it someplace else. Big things and little things. For instance, the, the, the stenciling that we have outside on our glass, on our windows, I'd say things like the, the times and days that were open. I paid a lot of money to have a big company install those. And then I found them on Etsy for 30 bucks where I could customize it myself and just put it up myself. So the first time around, I paid like $120 to have words put on top of on my store on the doors and have a person come out and fix it perfectly the second time i went on etsy i designed it myself and i looked at a youtube video about how to install it myself and i did it for 35 dollars. so i would definitely say do research on the pricing of everything that comes across your desk don't be afraid to push back you have to be very confident about um, realizing your dreams and taking them to the next level and realizing that they might change, not being easily offended if someone critiques them or offers you advice about how to do it better. Um, have selective listening as well and um, for people's perspectives. Know when to ask the right questions and how. All of those pieces are very important to the puzzle. But if you're too reluctant to get it off the ground, I don't think that this is for you because you're going to have to be giving a million <laughs> um, ideas off the ground during the course of, of your business and you can't be afraid to to get pushed back or to hear negative feedback uh if you're not market ready i would say ask around to find out ask your customer if this is what they really want and we have assumptions of what customers want, but just make sure that you validate it. And the best way to validate that is through quantifiable data. So you're gonna want to have a number where you ask 10 potential customers if this is something that they'd like, and you get nine yeses. This is something, oh my God, I never knew I wanted it, but I need it. That's how you know that it's right and ready for the market, um, is by actually taking data and being able to back up your work.
professional design and branding are super important integral for a business. You want to be able to tell the story based on what your company looks like visually to people, um, because that's what they see before they ever hear your message. So you want it to be super clear and concise. I would say it's probably one of the most important pieces of the front end of your business that customers see. They want to be able to see a brand they can relate to and the design aligns with that. Thank you viewers for watching Founder X series by Design Hill. You can find me online on Instagram and Twitter at, at Jasmine in DC. And you can find my company on Instagram and Facebook at Cherry Blossom Intimates on Instagram and at Cherry Blossom Intimates USA on Facebook. And you can follow along with us on cherryblossomintimates.com.